Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Um, what I wanted to say is this is going to be an overview of Milan. It's not like the top 20, the best, etc. It's more of an introduction to people who've never been. Um, and it's also a, a sort of guide to what you could see if you do go or what, what you might have missed if you, you went there for just a couple of days. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy it and have fun. Just to give you some statistics, if you've not been, it's the 56th year of Salone. Um, it's on early April. It got moved because of Easter. 2,000 exhibitors, huge space. As you can see, 300,000 visitors plus from lots and lots of countries. And every two years, they have Eurolucci. Eurolucci is um, the sort of lighting exhibition. And then every time in between that, they have Eurocachina, which is for kitchens. And I would say that Eurolucci never disappoints. It's one of those really satisfying exhibitions because it's all about lighting. And in my mind, lighting is one of the most important things in interior design. It really does um, sort of make an interior. Just to put everything into context, Milan, northern Italy. As I said, there's lots of different districts. Um, so as we go through, you see USM, very well established company. They had a new lighting system that they'd incorporated into their existing storage system which doesn't sound that exciting, but it's very clever because there's no sort of wires to it. And so it means that their system has become something a little bit more animated. And as much as it might seem like it's storage just for offices, you can use it in the home and all sorts of applications. And this was the stand that they had at the main fair. Um, and then they had a very big sort of party and event. Um, and again, it shows how useful it is in terms of display, a DJ booth, um, this is the party that they had, which was in the new uh, Museum of Culture, and uh, it's a fantastic space. Absolutely lent itself really well to um, their system because it was all about light. Salone Satelliti, that's part of the main fair, as I mentioned earlier, and it was celebrating its 20th year this year. And they have um, basically a platform with lots of students and new designers coming up. So you have lots of experimental design. So these are the people that will be the designers of the future, showing off what they can create now. Eurolucci, as I said, again, huge part of the main fair. Um, you've got top left, you've got creation by Anthony Dickens. Um, that's something that's taken quite some time to, to um, sort of develop over about five years with a company called Santa and Cole. Um, I wanted to introduce, talking of that, the next um, slide is uh, Matteo Bianchi. He's a designer that has launched a collection for Penta called Acorn. Um, and he's here this evening. So I want to um, give him a warm welcome. So welcome, Matteo. Thank you. Do you have a seat? Yeah. So just got a few questions. Um, which I will go through um, and then hopefully uh, give you the audience an idea about uh, how you came about this. So, first of all, um, why did you create this collection for Penta? Okay, so the Acre collection was, just... um, um, was originated about three years ago. So, some said one year is about Eurolucha lighting, and another year is about kitchen and bathroom. So three years ago I went there and I spotted this kind of big coming trend of having a lighting over your basin in the bathroom. So we all work in the same industry, we know that clients do spend all the money in the bathroom and we tend to get the lighting perfectly right for the bathroom. So I saw this trend and at that time I was working on development in Baker Street and there were five flats and two bathrooms per flat, so in total ten bathrooms. And we're very cheeky because we, we kind of sketch a light over the basin and, uh, and, and the mirror. And the thing about Milan is that they always tell you what's coming in next year or two. So whenever I go to Milan, I kind of know what's coming up in the next year or two. So you see trends, don't you? You, you do. Yes. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very clear. It's, yeah. it's exhausting. It's so well yes. so you come back with a full picture of what's going to be uh, the market life. So we sketched that into, you know, in front of a client. He loved it. And I said, well, where can we find it? And I said, well, I don't know yet, but it was to me. <laughs> and then I went back to one of my sales reps, which is here standing in front of me, and I said, um, look, I got 10 of those lights. It, they're sold. The client loves it. 
can you get someone to make it? And he said, just leave it to me. So he went back to Penta and they liked the idea. They understood that there was a IP rated pendant kind of niche missing the market because even nowadays when you Google IP rate dependent, there's still not that much into the market. So he went to the supplier, they liked the idea, and about six months later, we had it. And that's, and that's the fitting itself. And it's, um, it's called Aiken because it's, it's got a shape of an Aiken. You're answering my next question, but carry on. <laughs> it's all right. No, carry on. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 go on. So it's, um, the, 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 the way Aiken was designed was to be very functional because at the end of the day, it's an IP rated, it's IP44. And we wanted to combine something quite feminine like glass to make it quite transparent, quite soft, quite delicate. But at the same time, because it's sort of meant to stand next to you, we want to give a bit of core, but a bit of um, um, a bit of a materiality, if you want. And we so basically it's a shape, it's a it's a base of glass and there's a concrete paste on it. And that's how it was born, really. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think you've answered some of the things I was going to say next. It's like, where do you see this collection being used? I suppose because it's IP rated, it'll be in bathrooms, kitchens. Yeah, initially it was meant to be a, an IP rate dependent, and then um, obviously in every project that we do, we, we kind of place it there, and the client really starting to use it and like it anywhere, in the house or in the office. And, um, and then I suppose every supplier that starts seeing that one product is selling, to start thinking what could be the next step, and that's how the whole collection started. So, in, back in December, they asked after they've been to a Deprex, they asked me, Why don't we just get this life fitting to become a family? And that's how you can see the full potential of a product. And that, that, was, the, that was the result in Milan, and that was the installation that they launched in Milan. And what I like about this is that there's a story to it because you didn't just think, I need to design a light for. Milan, that you know, because lots of people design lights, so you could launch 25 lights and be, which would be overwhelmed with lights. But it's actually there was a need, and the client saw that, and then you developed them from there, which is great. So, um, what sort of response did you get to launching this in Milan? Uh, it's interesting because uh, they placed it right at the beginning. I was quite lucky that they placed it right at the beginning of the stand, and Penta is a company that is kind of coming back. Okay, carrying on then. Um, Airbnb, everybody knows who Airbnb are, and uh, they had a big presence in Milan. And what they did, I think was very, very clever, is that they uh, managed to negotiate that they would display the works of certain designers in a house where Leonardo da Vinci lived whilst he was painting The Last Supper. So this is a house with real history, um, and heritage and huge scale. It's incredible that it's in the, the center of Milan because this is the garden. They had a breakfast there and uh, very kindly invited through uh, David Morris of Design Exchange Magazine. And um, it was a really lovely experience to be somewhere that what they said was typically Milanese. So as much as you have the, the fair, which is very commercial and it's like big buildings and you have other things going on, they wanted to kind of basically get back to what Milan is about. Um, one thing that does happen when you're in Milan is that you, can, you may have a strategy, you may have a plan to go from <laughs> Lambrata to Tortona or from, uh, I don't know, Super Studio to the main fair. But then there's always something that distracts you and it could just be a little opening, a doorway or something like that. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was on the way to somewhere else and I saw this doorway into this beautiful courtyard and it was El Decor and it was also in tandem with Mini. I'm a bit of a car head. So that attracted me. And as you can see, this beautiful courtyard here, which had a cafe, bar, relaxing space. I mean, the weather in Milan this year was fantastic, so it was great to be outside. It's like 25 degrees the whole week. It's really, really lovely. And the whole idea with El Decor, and this doesn't really come through in some of these images, is that it was like a new concept for shopping. So what you did is you walked around this space and they had a virtual reality um, headset and you could get a chip from the entrance, reception area, and the chip basically would then 
recognize things that you liked and they would send you information about that or you could actually see things within the space that weren't there and you could change the specification and the color and the lighting so it's very technology based and that's something that came through very strongly in Milan this year and a lot of the shows that I've been to technology is so so important but it's also mixed with heritage so it's really quite interesting combination Again, another big brand. Um, I don't want to concentrate just on the big brands, but they're important. IKEA, they created almost like a village and um, very much about selling their furniture, but also in creating an environment where you think this isn't really what you see as IKEA. So this was very much about fun. Um, they had a slide. So people basically just took a rug and literally slid down that. Um, adults, kids, etc. Very, very inclusive. It was fantastic, really good fun. So they created rooms as well. This is like a room for nature. Again, that's something that came through very strongly. It's a very strong trend that is not going to go away. I mean, trends do last five, five seven years. There's micro trends, macro trends. This is very much a macro trend about bringing inside out, inside to the, the outside to the inside, um, surrounding yourself with plants and living nature so this was the ikea area as you can see they had like room sets like they have in the shops they hadn't they didn't have the arrows on the floor thank goodness but so you were free to go wherever you liked um, they even had prices on some of the items so they they were very commercial and you could get the meatballs as well you had to exchange you had to get vouchers to get the meatballs um, but they were clever in that you know you could buy cushions but you could buy larger items as well but then they had these room sets which you know that's an ikea sofa but they made it look like an artist studio so it's so much more creative they had lots of areas for children to play they have lots of areas just for sitting and lounging and drinking as well um, and then they they made sure that you were aware of the festival by just stamping the festival um graphics on the streets of Milan, everywhere in Milan. So you, even though that wasn't anywhere near it, you just were aware of it. 